Welcome back to another video for particularly the Linux series as I log into my Ubuntu environment. Uh, for this video, uh, sorry about the camera not being on. It's not sure. I think I need to restart it, but nonetheless, I'm going to move forward. In this video, I'll be editing files in Linux, and I'll start out with working with the VI text editor. All right, so I'm going to use the text editor to manipulate the file uh, particular, right? <clears throat> So now that I'm logged in, let's go ahead and head to the terminal. Actually make sure it's outside here. So get to it quickly. All right, there it is. All right. Perfect. Let's actually blow it up here. Okay. You should actually, yep. All right. Should ask me a question. There it is. Perfect. All right. So this update, it can take a few minutes to complete. So I'll place you guys on the other side of that. So now that it's finally finished, I'm just going to change the directory here and head over to documents. Okay, perfect. So now that we're there, it's going to head over to the VI Google's here. All right, perfect. So now that I'm inside, right now it's just pretty much open the prog underscore tools text file and the VI text editor, so which is what we see displayed here. Let me close back up. I mentioned earlier, right? It's just a text editor, right? With a couple of features, not really user friendly. Uh, but within Linux, there are programming tools like SED, AWK, uh, printf, and there is a description of each within um, of each of these that you can see here as far as this particular file. Um, you can pause if you want to read them, but these tools allow uh, allow someone within Linux to manipulate files. Uh, but as you can see, also. Now, when I try to type, can't really type over what's already here. Can only <laughs> I can only just type. You know, so, um, let me get rid of this here. Actually, turn this over here. I'm actually, going to use the keyboard here to. Just going to remove all of these. On it. <clears throat> okay, perfect. So now that I deleted it, as you can see, there's nothing else up there. So I'm just going to close this terminal. Actually, let me first. So I'm just going to close the terminal out. All right, then I'll open it back up here. All right, and I'll go back to the documents directory. All right, so then I'm gonna head back to text editor. All right, and as you can see, there is an error that, is a, that appears because the file is still technically open. So, uh, and you can also see that, you know, whatever was there before, uh, the text that was deleted also appears as well, just because the file wasn't saved. So now I'm just going to quit from the file. So I'm just going to escape out of here. Quit. There we go. All right, perfect. So it just brings you back up to the prompt that, that I originally had for the document uh, directory. So now what I'm going to do is use the VIM text editor. So I'm going to actually install and use it to edit and manipulate the files within Linux, right? 
But first, I'll just change the directory here. Uh, let's see if it'll let me. Okay, perfect. And then I'm just going to go home in the stranger. Books. Okay, perfect. So now I'm in the books uh, directory. So now I'm just going to install, like I mentioned. Yeah, I am. Perfect. Yes, of course. All right. A lot quicker than the last one. All right, perfect. So now I'm just going to change this, just like I did in the previous video. The name of, well, the capitalization of the name, rather. All right. And VIM, Dracula. I can spell it correctly. Back with text file. All right, perfect. So now what the CP command did, right, it created a copy file named Dracula.txt, right, or the lowercase, and then renamed it to the uppercase Dracula uh, text file within the same directory, of course, and the VIM command, it opened the, uh, the Dracula text file in the text editor window. So now that I'm here, just going to press escape here. All right, and then I'm just going to let me set number that populates for me. Then I'll be able to locate things a lot better for me. Uh, as you will see showcased here, I can go directly to here for this line, 7,883, right? And if I want to return to line one, let's hit one, and then I'm back, right? And then... If I want a particular keyword, I'll use this here and it'll take me to wherever the keyword is found and then it'll go chronologically or not, chron I guess chronologically in the form of the pages, it'll start with the earliest page going on down to the later pages, right? So, and then if I press N, it'll continue to go to each mention of the keyword that I'm searching for, right? Or that I have in mind. So now I'm just gonna press Shift N Right to return to my previous search uh, instance of the word. Oh, there it is, as you can see there. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm just going to go to line 126. All right. And then I'm going to type in another keyword. Right. This one. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. All right, so now we can see that the text is now replaced with uh, Practice Labs, right, instead of Parker. All right, so now I'm just going to perform a search throughout the file uh, by typing in another uh, query here. Uh, let's see. Sure, this is there we go. All right, perfect. So now, if I press escape and then type, let's say practice lab, I can find the number of instances that the text was replaced. But I'm not going to do that at the very moment, I'm just going to escape from here. If I can continue my exercise, all right, perfect. And now that I'm back here. Terminal, I'm just going to clear everything out so I can get a clean screen. And then I can move forward with using the nano text editor, right? So I'm just going to manipulate and edit some files within Linux uh, with the nano text editor. So first I'll start with, uh, let's see. <clears throat> okay. Let's start like that. Let's start like this. Here it is. Okay. All right, so now we see the nano text editor window, right? Everything that's displayed here. And there is an additional title bar and usually menu options that you'll see here at the bottom of the screen. 
And the text editor, at least the nano text editor, is a lot more user friendly. It's the default editor in Debian or Ubuntu, and it provides a couple powerful functions with simple help documentation. I'm going to try just a few of them uh, that I can see at the bottom of the editor, right? And you can also use uh, uh, arrow keys as well on, the, on your keyboard to navigate through any file as well. And I'll showcase it uh, this way. So if I were to type, let's see. <clears throat> Let's see, you know, it's supposed to be control shift, I forgot, control shift underscore. And now it allows me to type the number I want. So 2023, all right? When I type it, I'm navigated to line 2023, right? So now if I want additional help, I'm a little lost and I'll just hit control G and then it'll give me the display of keys uh, as far as if you need any, well, the help window is displayed. We need to see what certain keys, uh, what those command would provide you with, right? So what I'm gonna do now, just gonna exit the help window here, control and X, and then I'm gonna do control O as an Oscar. And now we see at the bottom of the window, uh, we see Frankenstein, the name of the text. I'm gonna change it from lowercase to uppercase. Right, then I hit enter, save file under a different name. Yes, perfect. So it's officially saved under that name with the uppercase. So now I'm just gonna hit control X again to exit from the text editor window, which brings me back to the terminal, right? As far as manipulating edited files within Linux using the nano text editor. And this also brings me to the end of this video. Uh, just for a brief recap, we edited some files uh, within Linux, a couple of different ways using the VI text editor using the VIM editor, and lastly, the nano text editor as well. We created and manipulated some files uh, in different ways using each editor, all three different ways. Uh, but nonetheless, again, this brings us to the end of the video, continuing my Linux series. I have quite a bit more. I cannot wait to show you in the future videos. I'll be back on the next one. Until then, stay curious, stay secure.